Dadge the Swordsman here. This is the second video of today. It's September 1st, 2022. I thought I'd go over some companies with news out. Uh, there's been a bunch of companies with news uh, since uh, or during the time I was away. Uh, I can't cover them all in, in one video. Uh, but I've been asked a lot about Snowline. Obviously, I mean, it's a major, very large position of mine. And uh, it's captured the market's attention. I mean, it's like, I don't know, may maybe almost the only gold junior that's actually uh, near all time highs right now. Uh, so uh, that kind of gives an idea just how impressive their work and results have been. Uh, that they have actually been able to get some people to dare buy uh, mining stock. Anyway, we, we got uh, uh, resu results from two and two thirds of a hole. Uh, we had hole uh, 005, 331 meters of slightly over one gram per ton. And that includes a higher grade interval of 192 meters of 1.52 grams per ton. I mean, th these are... I listened to an interview recently about from uh, Scott Berdahl, the CEO, and uh, you know he got asked, okay, what's the analogs here? Other you know types of deposits you could compare it to, and like he said, yes, there's Fort Knox and Eagle and some other Tintina gold type, uh, you know, intrusion related uh, or intrusion hosted gold systems, but the holes that Snowline are seeing already and th that includes pretty much the first holes of last year i mean they're, they're better than th those deposits highlight holes i mean that, that this is just incredible it's not it's not like they like the other cases where they have drilled you know i don't know hun hundreds of holes and they have some highlight holes that are like, you know, 300 meters of one gram per ton or, you know, 192 meters of 1.552 grams per ton. No, they're, they're hitting right off the bat. They're, they're getting way better results than those other deposits uh, have as highlight holes in, you know, let's say 50 to 100 and more drill holes. I mean, that kind of speaks to just how robust this intrusion uh, uh reduced intrusion related gold system is so so it's it stands apart right off the bat and like we've seen from the kennerland study you know if, if you get really good early stage results that uh signals that th you're not just extremely lucky this might be what whatever you're drilling might be a very very robust system because most deposits you can you know if you drill long enough you might get a the perfect angle on a hole or something like that and and you get a very very good result but that's it no snowline has been putting out results that are better than like fort knox and eagle uh continuously and this is still again very early stage which speaks even louder about the robustness of the system there there's not a there's no chance that these holes are the best holes that will ever be drilled at uh, the valley zone what are the odds that this i don't know you know one and a half di diameter slice of a deposit is like yes you hit the exact the the you know on a de decimeter scale you hit the exact best uh, parts of the system no there's not a chance that that's going to be it i think uh, and of course holes uh, 007 here is like 283 meters of 2.3 grams per ton 146 meters of 3.24 grams per ton was included Fort Knox is mining like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 grams per ton. Eagle is at 0 0.65. And they're making bank. Imagine how much bank you would make on like 3 to 4 to more than that times the grade those guys are uh, mining. Imagine the cash flow 
that could come out of uh, this deposit. Even the, the interesting thing is like, yes, there was even a hole here which was drilled uh, uh, in, the diff in a different direction. Let's see if we have the plane view. That's hole 6 here. Hole 5 was again 331 meters something of above 1 gram per ton. This uh, hole, which might have crossed a fault, they believe there might be a fault here. 295 meters of 0.23 grams per ton. So I was like, okay, I, I saw the headline holes, like, okay, damn. I, my base case was, my I thought conservative base case, was like three, 400 meters of 1.47 grams per ton for uh, hole 7. Obviously, that's uh, quite a bit higher at 2.3. And the hole is not even fully assayed. So when this hole 7 comes back complete we might have who knows we don't know what this is going to grade but maybe i'm assuming it might be slightly lower grade but like uh, if you take the full interval diluted interval maybe it will come out to like 400 meters of two grams per ton or something and it ended in mineralization so if they kept on drilling this might have ended up being a i don't know 450 500 meter hole of you know somewhere around two grams per ton i mean i don't remember the last time i saw a hole like that and that's one hole and they've already hit you know good stuff underneath it and when you listen to the interview by scott he says i mean the, I, I don't remember all the holes i think he's talking about 27 here which is all also in the kind of you know central corridor uh, which they which they call it with higher grades uh, that's a very long hole very long hole uh, they're seeing good stuff here uh, hole hole 10 here I mean look at the vein density they're drilling I think this is uh, the, it's an unnamed hole that's also going in the central corridor and they're hitting vein stuff out here I mean this is hole 6 here so that's 0.23 grams per ton and and I thought, okay, 0.23 grams, I mean, that's got to be waste. So, okay, th this particular area here might not be, you know, high-grade stuff. But apparently that's still over twice the cutoff grade at Fort Knox. So, given that, I mean, you wouldn't, you would, <laughs> you would probably not build a mine based on, you know, 0.23 grams per ton. But you would build a mine, uh, you know, for grades like found in hole 007 here, obviously. I mean, if, if you have scale, etc. That would be economically uh, uh, justified. But if you're going to build a mine here, and you can actually make money. I mean, if Fort Knox has a cutoff grade of point, uh, I don't know, point 0.1 grams per ton. So this could actually be ore. So even if this upper half here of the, uh, this part of the intrusion, let's say, I mean, th this looks higher grade. I think I, I think this is going to be more than 0.23. But if we as assume that this is going to, I don't know, average 0.4 grams per ton, this uh, side of the fault, let's say, y just guessing here, uh, maybe, I mean, that's probably going to be ore in that case. Especially, uh, you know, uh, at least it would be considered ore when we go into a gold bull. I don't like to make a case based on, you know, a beta play that, yes, if gold goes up, uh, th this, you know, could be a huge uh, moneymaker or very, you know, it would be economically feasible. No, th this, is the, this is what I build the case around. This is what I build the case. I, I think this is a... Uh, company maker this part of valley i think is a company maker but i think there's a pretty good shot that all of, all of this could be ore as well because if you have if you build a mine based on this and you have the pits you have the infrastructure and you actually can make money on like point i don't know two three four grams per ton and it might be higher who knows maybe there's a 
because the, this is so early stage still and we're still getting these obscene results so i mean here you see obviously in hole 17 that looks kind of hot i mean it kind of looks like hole 205 here so, so maybe this area is like one gram per ton but maybe some area here is like 0.2 or 0.3 and maybe this is 0.2 or 3 or you know there, there's a Diff bunch of different scenarios but I think this is the company maker alone here this this corridor let's say and every everything else then becomes gravy because if you do put in a mine here and you can make money on 0 0.2 3 4 5 grams per ton uh, that's going to be ore as well so I, I think I wanted to see the case intact and again, given how low the grades are in other mines of this type, I mean, this must, this should be a obscene cash cow at, at these grades. I mean, one gram per ton would probably be an immense cash cow because Eagle, the Eagle mine is making good bank on 0.65. In that case... Uh, the rest, the uh, 0.35 grams per ton, point, yeah, 0.35 grams per ton to reach one gram per ton, that would be pure profits in that case. Th that, th that's not bad. I mean, that's like 50% more profits, or, or not 50% more, more profits, but uh, I mean, imagine if, if l let's say, the Eagle Mine. Uh, I don't know, has a margin of like, you know, out of 0.65, they make a bank on, uh, you know, 0.15, that their, their oil and sustaining costs are like 0.40, so you have 0.65 minus 0.40, that's 25, uh, 0.25 grams per ton in, in, you know, margin, let's say, and there's 0.35 to get up to uh, values 1 gram per ton. In that case, that would be more than double the profits that Victoria Gold is mining out of Eagle. Double the profits, double more than double the margin. Th that is not 10%, that's over 100% more margin. And if we go into, of course, if we go into the over 2 gram per ton area, I mean, that, that's hundreds of percent higher margin stuff. Than what uh, in, in this scenario, than uh, Victoria Gold is mining, and especially Fort Knox. So you can just imagine the kind of cash flow that could come out of this if, when it's up and running, given what we know about Fort Knox and Eagle. Because, like we've seen, that uh, I mean, take Fosterville for example, that was not a multi billion dollar deposit because it had. 10 to 20 to 30 million ounces no it was every ounce was so economically valuable the margins were so high that that mine is worth more than or was worth more than a lot of 10 million ounce deposits so again if you can build a mine around 0.65 and actually have a mine at fort knox at around 0 0.3 0 0.4 imagine imagine the value of a mine in a similar type system that's grading maybe twice or higher grades this could be an uh, could be a immense cash cow this valley intrusion and we don't know the limits yet there was they had in the previous news release they had a uh, outlined a theoretical like sister intrusion or a you know or the same intrusion perhaps uh, I call it mini valley they tested this I think both of these holes tested that it appears that okay wh whatever it was it appears that it's, it's at least I mean they have veining you can see that there is veining because that's uh, uh, light yellow is uh, sub 5 and uh, orange is 5 to 10 so there's there's still waning here there's still veining here there's still I mean, here we know there's there was veining from the last, and some of these holes that were on the margin from last year, I mean, they didn't look that impressive from a vein density standpoint. 
and still they returned like over one gram per ton, which again would be way higher than Eagle and Fort Knox. And hole six here, for example, actually looked, you know, better, I would say, than hole three and four. And still that returned 0.23 uh, grams per ton, which is still uh, more than double the cutoff grade at Fort Knox. So it appears that vein density it's probably a good predictor, but again, you we have examples now that, okay, this was worse than this, even though it kind of looked better from a vein density perspective. So I, I guess uh, one conclusion is that, yes, we, we simply can't make too far-fetched conclusions in terms of grade solely based on vein density. I don't know why... Uh, this graded 0.23 and this this here graded point, uh, 1 gram per ton. Uh, maybe this part of the system, simply the fluids there didn't have the uh, same amount of gold or whatever. But we also don't know. It's like uh, this is so early stage that there might be, again, uh, there might be a fault here and maybe there's another fault. May maybe this area here, this like a quadrant, this is uh, going to be rich as well. Or maybe there's a pod starting here or, you know, because Mother Nature is certainly not simple. But uh, and, and then, of course, we have Gracie, uh, which they're drilling already hit visible gold. So, I mean, we know there's a Tintina gold system here as well but like scott said they don't know it's not outcropping so the whole thing is intact and it's a double-edged sword because there might be a massive system here because the trend is like five kilometers long but it also might mean that like there is one intrusion but the uh, the veins that made it to surface they spread out so much so you have an immense trend of gold so the footprint is huge but the actual like payson might not be that big we simply don't don't know it might even be too deep but it might not be too deep all we know is that yes this appears to be a tintina gold system hiding here as well and they have confirmed it with like hitting uh, similar veins and they have visible gold uh, so this is going to be a work in progress. Uh, I think there's obviously something hiding here. Uh, uh, well, we know there's something hiding here. Uh, so uh, this is a you know uh, to be decided type thing. I mean they've only drilled a few holes. I think they're going to drill four or five holes. We have no idea. I mean this might be a money maker. I mean they might hit hit it right off the bat, or it might be deeper. Maybe it's maybe it's hiding here. Maybe it's hiding here or here or it's you know so that we don't know so i, I i'm not going to put too much uh stock on on gracie just yet but for sure i mean there is a scenario where this is another valley discovery in the not too distant future or it might not be but when you think about how valuable valley looks this for sure should have some implied value if there's even a 10 percent chance of finding another valley and Valley looks to be really, really good. That's worth something, obviously. And it's like, if we just play around with some numbers here, uh, I think if we take a 500 meter height, 600 meter strike, which is like uh, around this long, I think. I mean, they've, they've already confirmed uh, veining etc that the system is alive uh, over one kilometer in in strike and that's from early stage drilling it might you know go way over here and might get better up here uh, might get better here we don't know but what is confirmed is that yes they're, they've, they've been hitting veining over one kilometer but if we just take 500 meter height because these systems tend to i mean fort knox and eagle they're They've confirmed mineralization down to 800 meter, and this is the more the upper parts of a, one of these systems. So it should be at least 800 meters deep. We don't know the grades, of course, but like that, I think is a pretty safe assumption given what we know about these systems, and given that we know that Valley is uh, the higher portion of one of these systems, a more intact system. 
So if we take 500 meters, strike 600 meters, let's see us focus on this area. With 300 meters, yeah, why not? 300 meters probably wider uh, than that. Uh, and let's say 1.5 gram per ton. Let's not even say two grams per ton. Let's say 1.5 gram per ton. That's 11.7 million ounces of what I would think would be highly economical uh, gold. Again, if we just think about the margins, that would be hundreds of percent. I mean, all else equal, if we just took the operation at Fort Knox and Eagle and put in 1.5 grams per ton, then uh, instead of 0 0.3, 0 0.4 or 0 0.65, that would be hundreds of percent uh, higher margin operation than uh, Fort Knox and Eagle. In other words, every ounce would in that case be hundreds of percent more valuable at Valley than at Fort Knox and Eagle, simply because uh, the value of an ounce is how much money you make on it when you mine it. And if you have 0.4 or 0.3 grams per ton costs equivalent, and you have 1.5. That's over 100% margin. Uh, or not, not, not over 100% margin. That's 1.5 minus whatever uh, gram per ton uh, cutoff uh, you want to use to break even. Let's just say it's a lot and would be 100% higher than whatever margin uh, they would be mining at Fort Knox and Eagle. So I think, again, this is the company. Maker. So my, my personal view of Snowline right now is that I treat it as, based on, on the balance of probabilities, I view it as this is, this is going to be at least 10 million ounces. Basically, I think it's going to be more than that. I think it could be way more than that. But but that that's to help me think about what I'm paying for it or, you know, value versus price. So I'm thinking I'm I'm for sure buying 10 million ounces here of probably very high uh, very economic gold. And then I compare it to the price. So so I I Used that just to help myself stay rational, and when I look at price, and that, so I basically, I treat it as this is a ten million ounce high margin deposit. Not, I'm not saying that that's a guarantee that it is. I'm just saying that, uh, uh, in my mind, the balance of probabilities is that I tr I treat this as this is a at least ten million ounce high margin deposit. And last I looked, uh, when I took out the uh, value I put on Jupiter and all the other targets, etc., I, I think what's priced in for value is around, uh, let, let's say, uh, I'm fully diluted, undiluted, but let's say 300 million Canadian. So I, I see it as right now I'm paying 300 million Canadian, Canadian for a high margin 10 million ounce deposit. And when I uh, think about the value, let's say, of the Eagle deposit and Fort Knox, uh, it's it's simply for, for me Snow Line. I, I have I have yet to sell a share. Uh, I might actually e even buy more because uh, I wrote it all the way up, and I, then the correction came. But I I was out of money, so I I couldn't, and I didn't want to sell because, like I've said before. Uh, when you look at every successful exploration story, every company that went on to be a 10 plus bagger after a discovery hole, uh, that typically took two to three years. And uh, there were a bunch of 30 to 50% corrections along the way. So with that said, I was already comfortable with the fact, I, I, I let's say I, I didn't panic when we, you know, finally got a correction like we have right now, because I was already 
prepared for the fact that if I want to have a 10 bagger or more in snow line, uh, I would need to, I, I, I will need to be able to sit through 30 to 50% corrections and just sit on my hands for maybe two years. So if, if you know that's how the, if you know that's how the game works, that's how 10 baggers work, let's say. That if you want to have a 10 bagger, you must hold it for two years. You must be, uh, you must be willing to sit through 30 to 50 percent corrections. Then it all, all, all of a sudden feels kind of you get some kind of calm because you know, okay, this is how they work. This is how 10 baggers work. You have big corrections. You have profit taking events. But as long as the case is intact, as long as there's probable growth. The trend is probably going to be up. So you're going to get bailed out. And the next time will probably be <coughs> higher than the previous one. Etc. But that is extremely hard to do. Because most people. And that goes for Snowline. I mean I have a very big position. I mean most people will probably be watching Snowline every day. Every, every tick or whatever. I'm just again. I. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for myself and make it as simple as possible to be able to just sit and huddle. And that's why I came up with uh, my conclusion that I'm, I'm now treating this as a 10 million plus ounce deposit that I own that is high margin and will probably grow. And then I just compare it to whatever valuation the Mr. Market puts on it on it each day. And if the valuation put on it right now by Mr. Market is some 300 million Canadian, I am very comfortable owning that uh, because I do not think that is anywhere near overvalued. I think that's actually cheap. Uh, especially again, since I think there's going to be more stuff to come. Uh, yeah, okay, long rant there, but you can... I. I encourage people to play around with their own numbers uh, I mean I just did one here let's say for a you know a lower grade area maybe 0.4 grams per ton it's like 400 meters height strike 700 meters 300 meters width uh, that's still almost nine uh, three million ounces uh, so that's like one third of a Fort Knox deposit at like Fort Knox grades uh, which would I, I could see it as a you know bonus because I think again that this is the company maker but if you get a third of a Fort Knox here it might be better might be worse I don't know uh, th that's not something to sneeze at I mean that's that could be worth more than the current mark uh, valuation uh, just an idea uh, no guarantees obviously uh, then we ha have Cabral really more good stuff and i really like that cabral the 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 ceo alan he puts out a commentary where he talks about the results because it's hard to keep up with cabral because they have so there's so much gold all, all this yellow stuff here is historic place working so it's like riddled with gold sh gold shedding all over the place and they've hit gold all over the place so they have the luxury of having an incredible amount of targets and and they keep uh, you know finding high grade uh, gold all over the place and the challenge then is obviously to uh, you know tie it all together but here's Alan Carter uh, commenting on the news release and and he he again there there's uh, he has more comments than this but in this one, he says, these drill results from the eastern part of the Machichi main zone extend the mineralized zone to depth. It remains open down deep on every section. All five follow-up diamond drill holes at the Machichi main zone cut broad zones of alteration, including significant zones of high-grade mineralization. This is very similar to the style of mineralization found within the central and MG the gold deposit, as well as the new PDM discovery. Recent trenching to the west, west also suggests that the Machichi main zone extends for more than 900 meter long strike. To the west it coalesces with a major northeast trending vein array combined with the Machichi west, Machichi southwest, Machichi main zone and the Machichi northeast target 
areas are now referred to as the Machichi complex, which is likely to, to grow, likely to grow into a significant deposit. So this is a basically a let's say a new hub. So they have the PDM discovery with oxide blanket, central oxide blanket, central gold deposit, Machichi West. Uh, MG oxide blanket, MG gold deposit, and this again turning into a complex here. So yeah, do I think Cabral is going to grow? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's not pricing. I mean, Brazil appears to be a very good, uh, very good mining jurisdiction actually, because there seems it seems to be one of few places where companies can actually put mines into production, and that's when you think about it from a net present value perspective that's really really good uh, so again uh, yeah Cabral just keep they keep doing their thing uh, market still doesn't really uh, care because nobody cares about miners uh, but they are increasing the value Montoro acquires 51% interest in the Golden Hill property in Bolivia we have yet to get any assays out uh, but uh, I take that as a good sign uh, that they're, you know, uh, exercise this option to acquire an initial 51%. You obviously don't uh, acquire something or exercise an option if you don't like it. Scotty Resources, first three holes out. Uh, one real, you know, <laughs> real headline hole. 12.5 meters at 13.3 grams per ton. We don't know the true width, but they hit high grade gold in all three holes. Um, and and this could be br broken down in, in, you know, some even higher grade intervals. Uh, obviously a very good hole. I would like to see where these holes were drilled, but I think there's they're going to drill 53 holes. So these are the first three holes out of 53. So there's 50 more holes. So I think there's going to be more high grade Hits from the blueberry zone for sure. Uh, I think it's going to grow. Uh, when the market will care about it or if it will care about it, I don't know. Uh, but uh, so far, I mean, the the story is intact because, again, they keep hitting. Uh, White Rock and recommences gold production at its Morningstar mine. Uh, and I think they had news out this morning as well. Uh yeah, this is, I mean, uh, as I said before, White Rock, I think that's the one, um, that's my biggest loser ever, I think, in, in uh, absolute money terms. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for, let's say, to see what happens. I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculously cheap based on the assets they have. But let's say I'm not totally impressed with uh, what they have done with the money so far that they've taken in. Uh, so I'm not, uh, I I'm waiting to be positively surprised, let's say, in this one. Line 1 Mels announces regional gold discovery two kilometers north east of Tuvato Outline Gold Project in Fiji. So they've done some trenching, 13.27 um, grams per ton over four meters. That sounds like a, you know, Tuvatu type uh, gold load, pretty much. Uh, you know, uh, very high grade hits uh, in, in, you know, let's say, you know, small veins, etc. Uh, it's quite a four. Here's the Tuvatu gold project. Here's the Batiri bench. I mean, yeah, the, like we've known this already, I think. I mean, this is probably a huge, the whole caldera might have, I mean, be absolutely loaded with gold. The trick is that it's a very dense vegetation in Fiji. I've been there. So it's not like everything's outcropping. No, it's, it's you know, <laughs> kind of a jungle. So, so you, you'll have to... Uh, take what you can get in terms of outcropping and, and you know, this is... Prob I, I would assume this might be, you know, a road cut. Uh, so they they you know put in a road and then then they trench at the same time, obviously. So they have a vein sticking up uh, or a 
veins, I would say. Uh, but I mean, in, in 10 years, etc., I think there's going to be much more gold found. Um, the shares have been, well, I mean, it's, it's hard to say anything right now because nobody wants to buy juniors. So it almost doesn't matter what kind of news is out there because there's no buying power. There's no, there's no buying power down here. That's the whole point for it being down here. Because if people actually acknowledged that the juniors were cheap, we wouldn't have gotten to this level. No, there's enough people that are comfortable selling here uh, that we're stuck at these levels in juniors. But again, 95% of people uh, are, will not be the market. Uh, so I'm not, I mean, they're cashed up still, they're working. I mean, obviously to be a developer in this day and age is not the easiest thing. So I think that kind of weighs on the stock perhaps that there's, you know, the cost inflation, et cetera, et cetera. But times will change, things will change as always. This is a incredible gold system. You've seen some of the previous highlight hits were, which were absolutely ridiculous, like 21 grams per ton over 75 meters uh, so th this will be a mine uh, I think I'm pretty sure of that and they're working I mean they're building the mine now uh, Rockmaster intersects 6.32 grams per ton AU equivalent or 4.25 meter and extends the main zone 450 meter to the southeast on the Rebel Ridge project Rebel Ridge uh, I mean, Rockmaster is absolutely dirt cheap. I think it has a market keep cap right now of 12, 12 million. Uh, they have the Rebel Ridge, which, which is like, I think it's around... Uh, 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 yeah, around 2.5 million ounces AU equivalent. It has difficult metallurgy. They have the option payments to acquire 100% of Rebel Ridge that will be needed to be paid they paid some but not the whole amount and at, to to have that option payment overhang at a time like this i mean that's just incredibly unfortunate uh so it's it's been it's dirt cheap now because there's again the, they have those things hanging over the company uh, Rebel Ridge looks like a very big system. It's probably going to get uh, a lot bigger if they just, you know, keep on drilling, etc. They have other assets as well. So yes, at face value, it's incredibly cheap. Uh, but we also know that it's kept incredibly cheap because the market is extremely poor and that punishes uh, Rockmaster more than others because of the need to raise money in the future to pay off the option. We still see insiders buying pretty much every week or month. And I, th I think I recently saw uh, more insider uh, buying. And they have other projects as well. So, I mean, at some point, it all almost becomes like you get Revel the Revel Ridge thing for free. Of course, there's a time limit because they have set dates when they need to pay it off, etc. But it's like, if theoretically, I mean, at, at some valuation, it would probably be cheap even if they threw away the Rebel Ridge project. So I think, I mean, if if we would get a major bottom soon and gold and silver would just skyrocket, I think, I mean, the beta in Rockmaster might be kind of obscene. But I don't, again, like to just bank on that because in that case, you're basically banking on the, you know, saving grace of, of the metals performing, etc. So it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard one. It's a difficult one. Yes, it's absolutely, it's, it's cheap. It's just that timing is an issue for Rockmaster. Because if there's no capital, if it's, hard to raise the money then they, they then they can't acquire the Rebel Ridge project so it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy I mean the, the better the market is the more value uh, Rookmaster will get 
more value than most juniors uh, simply by a s shift in sentiment. So I think it could be a very wild ride. Uh, but I'm not like plowing into Rookmaster, uh, but I'm not inclined to sell either. Uh, so yeah, it's it's one of those like uh, let's let's see what happens <laughs> kind of situations, I guess. Uh, I think that's all for now. Again, there's been more companies that put out news. New new uh, Nevada King has drilled. Uh, what was it for or I think 4,000 meters at uh, their Lewis project etc so it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that and they are obviously I think they have three drill rigs at the, at the Atlanta gold mine Timberline has yet to release any assays uh, and I think they will have some good assays we're waiting for all assays from SK mining Eloro has been quiet for some time now, so I would expect there to be some assets or something like that. Maybe, I mean, we're getting closer to the maiden resource as well. So there's a bunch of stuff. It's like this, everything takes longer than one thinks in the miners. And if nothing changes and the prices just go slower, I mean, what am I supposed to do? Of course, I'm more inclined to just buy. I mean, at least less inclined to sell. So I, I my... My job as an investor has been quite easy lately because uh, I just get more reasons to buy and I, I haven't had much in terms of dry powder. So, I mean, if, if I'm less and less inclined to sell and I have, uh, I'm short on dry powder because I'm already, you know, I, I think everything was already cheap. There's not much to do than to roll my thumbs and, you know, enjoy the late summer days and uh, you know go work out and read books or whatever uh, because i'm a value investor and everything is cheap so uh, my job is simply to wait for them to not be cheap or find something that's even cheaper than what i own i mean that's that's it most of the time i'm just i'm just waiting for mr market to see it my way and that might be a six months from now or a year from now or two years from now i just know that when they when when Mr. Market does agree with me, on average, uh, I'm going to be happy I bought and hold at these levels. Uh, consider me biased. Uh, assume my own all stocks mentioned. Assume I'm sponsored by all companies mentioned. Uh, this is not investing advice. Do your own due diligence. Make up your own mind. Uh, because I don't share your profits or your losses. And you need to really know yourself why you buy and sell something. Uh, I think because nobody's going to be there holding your hand all the time and there's it's uh, very easy for people to panic uh, either panic buy or panic sell so always take a deep breath and and really I mean you should be able to write down why you buy or sell a stock uh, if you just sell it on a whim or buy on a whim you don't really have a strategy you're following you're, you're just uh, giving into temptation let's say so that's going to lead you astray anyway uh, even again it's like even even if you're on to a winner i mean there's many ways to lose out because you do the wrong things and uh, there's going to be a bunch of losers losers as well i mean the, the big success is the exception in this sector and what makes it even harder is even the big successes are so hard to actually do the right thing in let's say because a lot of people want 10 baggers but very few can actually sit through a 10 bagger journey anyway hit the thumbs up button if you like this stuff uh, i hope you have a great day bye